Welcome to this week in Marymount Warrior Sports here on ESPN Media, powered by Sidearm Sports. I'm Jason Griefer. As always, we're joined by Marymount Athletic Director Tom Neural. Uh, Tom, good to talk to you again. How are things up at Marymount? Things are great in Marymount. It's a it's a cloudy Monday, but it's a, it was a big win weekend, and so uh, and the tournament draws are are out of the way, and yep. so we're ready to start fresh with another week and uh, see what happens. Championship week this week. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of tournament draws have been uh, yeah. have, have been are out there now, and, and let's start with one of them. We already knew the draw going into it, and now the tournament has begun, and that's your football team and. Uh, we talked last week how we thought it was going to be another thriller with Reading, and it, it lived up to the billing this time on your on your uh, on your turf there. But you get the job done one more time against Reading to move on. First playoff win since 2006. We yeah. like that. And uh, now moving on, you're going to take on West Liberty Salem uh, in the second round here. So it, it, it's inter interesting looking at this how you're able to pull that off there. So uh, take us through that, and then now that they have the experience under their belts, the playoff experience that is. Uh, for these guys, how do they go about using that when they uh, go on the road this week looking for the upset? You know, it's it's just great. It's uh, you know being in the postseason a little bit earlier than uh, than you normally are for football, but you know, we had a little bit of uh, yeah, a little bit of a down week against Deer Park. Just weren't really up on the sidelines or anything. And this week we opened uh, we opened the play opened with a halfback pass. Uh, Clarence Meyer gave it to David Dorson. He found Souders deep on the first play of the game. Talk about something that brings some energy to a sideline real quick, and uh, you know, well, real quick, 14-0. Reading started to battle back. We knew it was uh, we knew it was going to be a battle. And it was a battle all the way to the last to the last two snaps of the game. So uh, just great effort by our kids to stay after it all game. Uh, you know, defense you know, rebounded towards the end. Offense had some great plays, a lot of great plays in there. Uh, just a total team effort, and so it is exciting. Um, as you saw, Twitter feeds throughout the state of all the of all the schools winning their first playoff game, of being in the community excitement, um, it just starts to build. The only, the only bad thing is with this pandemic is you can't bring all the people in that you'd like to. Um, but we had a good parent crowd, uh, a, a few students at the game as well. So just a great environment to have a home playoff game on, on Saturday. And then we get to go to, uh, as you said, uh, West Liberty Salem and, and try it again this week and try our luck with that. So it's a long week. It's a, it's a six-day week, but the kids are excited to move on. So we'll see what happens. Now that they have that, uh, it's, it's been a while since this, since uh, you've been able to get a playoff win there, as I said, since 2006 there. How is the community support around this team now that they're not, not only in the playoffs, now they've got a win underneath their belts? Because like you said, it's been a while. Yeah, the, you know, the people that know, you know there's, a, there's a buzz in the community. Uh, not as much as there would be, like I said, without the pandemic because mm -hmm. the whole town would have been out. Um, but, but the people that were there, um, had a good time. They were very enthusiastic. The talk around the town is not just football, but tennis and soccer. Um, just a lot of good things going on. And that's what we hear going around the community is just how well so many of the teams are doing. So it's, it's a great buzz. It's a great, um, yeah, it's a great feel around here. So um, we just want to keep it going week by week and, and see what happens. Let's move on to the golf course and uh, the post. They were already in the postseason. You know, got through the sectionals and go to the districts here. Let's start with Laney Hurt. Uh, goes to the districts uh, out at a uh, Pipestone shoots ninety two. So do doesn't advance on through there. But of course, it had to be the top, she had to be in the top three to advance. And it was a, it was a very uh, very uh, loaded field. She was in there. Uh, how did she feel she played there? And uh, how do you feel like her uh, season went in total? Well, she had a great season. Uh, great improvement from over last year uh, to come into the sectional this year and be a sectional runner up and then go up to Pipestone with that experience. Just a, a great year for Laney and, uh, and great improvement. So uh, more coming. And in the junior high, we, we have our first girls junior high golf team. So there's reinforcements coming in a couple of years. So by the time Laney graduates, we should have a, a full girls golf team. And, uh, but just a great season for her. Great kid, uh, great results and uh, really happy for her with that. And just really excited to see what she improves to next year as well. Over on the boys' side, uh, it's a similar story. Here. Shoot well, and we we've talked and how how the how the season's gone. It's it's seemingly you've been tied at the hip with Madeira and Indian Hill, and uh, you, you you all three of you get into the districts. However, not able to move on. You yeah. you, you finished fifth there uh, as a team, and of course Madeira and Indian Hill. Of course, they're sixth and seventh because why wouldn't they be? They're right there with you as well. But again, uh, you know, so unable to move on there. Andrew Getke was top individual with the 81 there. So uh, 
Again, a tough course out there at Glenview. How do you feel they played or they disappointed they weren't able to move on? And uh, I thought a pretty successful year overall, would you say? Yeah, I think they're disappointed that they didn't move on. Um, but it was a couple a couple uh, rough holes out there at Glenview the other day. But as you said, it is a, a tough course, even though we're familiar with it. Um, but a good year for them. Again, again, like a number of our teams, this is a young team. Um, we lose one starting senior, uh, and Andrew Getchy, and we have a lot of people back. And uh, just the experience that they'll gain, some of them from playing in districts and back-to-back -back years, and some of them from the first district. Uh, but to, to to come back with a season like that, win a sectional, be in the running for the the CHL, the the league title, and the and the tournament title, just a lot of good things there. So um, you know, unless you're a state champion, you lose your last match, and so sometimes that's unfortunate. But you know, they lost their last match, but they had an outstanding year. So I'm really glad for them. A really good bunch of boys, and um, happy for the season that they had. Yeah, as you said, going to have a lot coming back next year. So yeah, that only keeps the excitement going. But also, I would have to think, raises the expectations. So uh, a lot of work to be done moving forward. But again, you got a good group coming back there. Let's move on and uh, talk about volleyball. And it's, uh, it's, it's been a tough stretch for volleyball. I, I don't think there's any, uh, any, uh, any argument about that, the way things have gone. Uh, tournament ha uh, has been – seeding has been announced to be a nine seed. They'll get Summit in the playoffs uh, starting on Saturday, October 24th. But still got some business to take care of in the regular season. You're going to get Deer Park coming up on a Tuesday. Uh, they're winless on the season. But uh, important match here, at least from I would think, for your team because it's been almost a calendar month since you've been able to get, get into the win column, and that win was over Deer Park. So it is, how big of a win would this be just to get one back under the, in the win column going into the postseason? Yeah, you know, the former coach of me says it's always important to get a win, no matter where it comes or who it comes against. Um, but just just for confidence, just to, that they can believe that they can do it. Um, they're we're, they're not a bad team. We're a young team, um, mm -hmm. and you can see them play aggressively at times, and then you can see the confidence start to wane, and then and then our approach changes um, as players instead of having that aggressiveness, just trying to play not to make mistakes. And so we need to get that back. And that's, and that's what happens with young teams. They just, yeah. they really don't know how to, to stay aggressive and, and, and forget about the mistakes. And so hopefully, um, you know, we, we go through that. Madero's having a very good season this year as well. Mm -hmm. Um, we wrapped up with them on, on Thursday at our place. Um, so that's the, that's a rivalry game. So yep. you know, hopefully the girls are ready. They've had a long weekend um, to, to regroup. We'll go up to Deer Park tomorrow. And then, as you said, the tournament's right around the corner. So um, at Summit's a very formidable opponent. So we'll have our work cut out. But you know, like I told the girls, you know, you just got to get a win. It's one point at a time. It's like eating an elephant. You know, you just take it one bite at a time. <laughs> so you go after it and uh, and you see what happens and just play. Just play one point at a time. And before you know it, hopefully you get a few points together, you get a few wins together, and then you move on. Am I talking to Tom Nurl or Gordon Ramsey? Well, well we're going to give it all to you today. So. <laughs> I've, I've never heard the phrase friend. eating an elephant. So that, there we go. Okay. That's a, that's a new one for you folks. Write it down. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about a uh, cross country and it, everything's been kind of building over the last few weeks. And we've talked about some of the performances that your runners have had uh, going in to uh, this coming week, which of course is you know, the league championship. It's coming up here. So you know, obviously it's a very competitive CHL field. As we also said, you're uh you've been running teams have been running well the last few weeks coming in how are they feeling leading up to this and, and do do they feel like they've got a legitimate shot uh, to win a title yeah they really do you know we we talked a few weeks back just on the layoffs of not having a consistent you know week in a week out meet and 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 the, and the runners getting rested and getting their training in but you know the last two weeks of Indian Lake the the boys and girls finished one and two last week at New Richmond boys and girls finishing one and two the boys running as a pack um, I think all their finishers were all within the top 10 at New Richmond to take the to take the trophy there they are they are feeling good they are they are healthy and they're ready to run so they're really looking forward to um, the, the track this week in the CHL uh, dry conditions by looking at the forecast so sometimes you get into sloppy ones and and, uh, and that makes running tough, but but just have the crew back this week and, and running together. They're really excited, and, and Coach Dragovich is really excited about what they can do. 
Um, the team's talking about taking both sides of it, so not to give any material for other teams to hang on their bulletin boards, but um, boy, they're, they're ready to go. And uh, just watching them train, watching them together, um, just the, the unity between the two teams is really outstanding to see. So good luck to them this week. Uh, it's going to be a new, a new track for us to run on, um, but they're excited they're ready to go. So uh, we'll be out there Saturday morning and, and hopefully we can come back with a, a couple more trophies. No bulletin board material for other schools, but I would just no. say for, 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 those, for those other schools out there, just, just try and figure out how to eat an elephant. And, yeah, and yeah, just, just come back and try to catch Focus it. your attention on that and just <laughs> worry about the running later. You can hang the elephant on the bulletin board. There you, there you go. There you go. You'd have to have a heck of a crane to do it, but you could do it. Uh, let's, uh, let's move on and talk about uh, tennis here because they, they were – it seemed like the, the sectional was just littered with Marymont players, you know, going through here. You have, I believe, three players make the semifinals, yeah. singles, and then you've got a couple of your doubles teams uh, at least get into the semis. One of them gets into the championship there as well. Uh, take us through how things went there and what was the mood around the team when the sectional came to an end. Yeah, no, we talked last week. Coach Sprain was really excited and thought he could move on uh, a number of girls to the districts and a number of athletes to the districts, and, and he did that. Uh, you know, some years we sent six. This year we're sending all seven to the districts. An outstanding accomplishment for this team. We've been talking all year that they're young and they're hard-hitting and they're good. And so uh, they are. And it really came through um, with the sectionals this week and the singles. You had Kate Taylor taking second. You had uh, Ella Malifa finishing third. You had Peyton Wilhelm with fourth. You know, I, I believe Malifa had a, a have, had a five hour match um, to wear it down. Then oh. she had to come back on Thursday uh, to battle Roger Bacon, and then play again on Saturday. She had the extra game and the extra match in her bracket. So, um, just a lot of tennis for her this week, and yeah. and getting it, getting it done. And then our doubles have been consistent all year. Claire Solar and, and Logan Wilhelm taking second. Caroline Solar. Uh, and Lucy Neville taking third. I guess the solar girls just go home and hit tennis balls. Um, I guess that's what they do because um, it'd be interesting to see if they play doubles together and, and see if sisters, how sisters get along when playing <laughs> as, as we hear. Um, I know how my boys got along when they played baseball, so that would be interesting. Um, but we're getting off subject. Uh, but, but an outstanding season for those girls, and they're really excited um, to get on the districts. It was a great day for tennis on Saturday. Great weather. Um, and you get into this this time of the year, a lot of times with a tennis tournament and they're wearing sweats and everything else. Um, got just a, a really good team, a really good, oh man, just a really good makeup of the team and yeah. um, God, they're having so much fun playing. So hopefully, hopefully we can get a couple past this level and, and sneak into state. It'll be fun to watch. Yeah. We saw us and seeing, looking at the bracket there and see how some of the things came through. We saw Kate Taylor have to beat Peyton Wilhelm in the semis <laughs> to get to the final. I mean, Yes. As an athletic director, maybe for Coach Breen, are you just hoping nobody comes through with the, no, everybody comes through that match healthy and moving forward? I mean, how do you pick? How do you pick a side there? Yeah, uh, you you know, you know, you, you know, it's a win win, and uh, <laughs> you know, there's still teammates at the end. You hope no one gets hurt, you know, in a match like that. Uh, unlike some games you watch as a fan, where you hope both teams lose. Um, you know, you wish. Both- <laughs> Both girls would win here, but someone has to win because yeah. one person has to go ahead in the bracket. So um, that, that was he was really excited about that, and, and he, he texted that to me after the first day of play. And I said, I, I think he sent me something wrong. He goes, no, no, they, they play each other. So um, and if you know Coach Spring, he's very excitable. and uh, But but he's, he's also very positive, and he's very excited about this team. And so uh, hopefully we can get out this week and, and watch that. Um, just a great – tournament for the tennis team yeah real good opportunity for them uh, moving forward let's move on to the pitch here and let's talk about the boys first they're still undefeated they're still ranked number one in the state they will be a number one seed uh, in the in the tournament they'll take on the winner of felicity franklin and deer park that match will come on thursday october 22nd so they already know their they already know their playoff draw and uh, we'll talk about that here in a second but uh you know, you look at this, the way they're setting up here, they've got, you know, Madeira coming up this week. Their only league loss was to Wyoming. So mm-hmm. pretty good club that you're going to take on here. But your team has also really turned on as of late. You look at how things have gone as of late. The last five matches, they have outscored their opponents 28 nil. So both sides of the ball working very, very well. But one of the things I also liked in looking at the numbers, your keeper Maddox Miller has only had to make 15 saves during these last five matches. So they're scoring a bunch. And only giving up an average of a three of three shots yeah. on goal per game, 
What's that been like for you and for the coaches to see the entire team take it to another level? I know we talked last week about Luke Brothers doing what he's doing, and, and he's still scoring a ton of goals. That hasn't changed, but it's the entire team, and they're doing it on both sides of the, of the pitch. It is. And, and defense is always hard because you don't always get recognized for your defense unless you're the goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's been a number of games where, the, where, uh, where, where Miller's been out of goal. He's made a save. There's been a ricochet and the defense falls back and saves it, clearing the ball, kicking it out, getting back. Excellent backline defense. And that's one of the first things you'll hear Coach Vonick say is, is that the defense has also saved the keeper a number of times as much as the keeper has, has saved the defense. And they take pride. They take pride in putting up those zeros. They take mm-hmm. pride in, uh, in, in taking care of their goalkeepers. So um, we've said this on here before, defense wins championships. You can't always score more, but you can if you keep their team from scoring, that usually helps. And so um, that's what they're going after. And, and um, you know, Coach Vonick's kind of changed his strategy a little bit this year. He took the first round by. I don't know if, if Coach Vonick has ever taken a first, year, a first round by in the tournament. But, uh, but he has, and, and, and we'll have to keep the team sharp. It's going to be 11 days between contests. But a very big contest tomorrow night at Madeira. Yeah. Um, it's always a tight contest back and forth. You know, it's one way or the other, it seems like we have to go through them. They have to go through us for a league title. So uh, I'm sure uh, the, 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 the Mustangs will have the stadium packed with as many people as they can have. Um, it's going to be a great crowd. It's going to be a great night. It's going to be great weather. So um, we've got a share of the league title. We like to have it all to ourselves and be stingy this year and, and see what happens. Um, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun to watch tomorrow night. So, so good luck to them. Come out here healthy, rest up, get ready for the tournament, and then see what we can do um, through the sectionals and the districts. And in reference to last week's show, hopefully do get all 11 onto the all league team as we talked yes. about it. You were kind of, you were kind of, what we can get. You were kind of <laughs> bummed only one, only get, possibly getting 10 on the league team. Let's work and get all 11. Let's finish that we'll out. Do what we can get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over on the girls side, uh, they also are a number one seed. They have also taken the first round by they'll be in playoff action on Saturday, the 24th, taking on the winner of Fayetteville and uh, Clark Montessori. So they already know the draw there, but they also <laughs> like the boys, have a chance to take out Madeira this week and also win the title uh, outright there uh, too. And, and you, know, you, you look at the way things have gone with this with the girls team. It's been more – they haven't, haven't had a, necessarily the offensive punch that the boys have had all season long. And, and probably, I'm sure some of that's by design, you know, winning a lot of games at 2-0, 3-0, those types of things. However, they have found another gear offensively. Their last three games, their highest three scoring outputs of the year, 7-6 and 5. So – they're finding their groove offensively, you know, seemingly at the right time. Is this outburst something the coaches have been expecting from the team? And do they think it's also something that can be sustained you know, into this match against Madeira and especially going into the playoffs? Yeah, Coach Haney's really excited about what they've been doing. There's been a little tinkering with the lineup, you know, as you get to this point of the season, maybe moving some people around, maybe getting some other athletes to, to step up. But you know, we, we knew we had uh, Maya and Murphy, you know, coming up, going in. Marley McGowan's been a big piece of that. Um, but then some other athletes stepping up as well and, and getting into the scoring. And so you can take away one, you can't take away four. And uh, once we find the, the other ones getting open, uh, they're finding the goal. And they're just they're just, <laughs> just their excitement in the games has been fun to watch as, as, other, as other people score as they go throughout the contest. And, and so this has been building a, a very good match with uh, McNick on Saturday. But again, it goes through Madeira on, on Wednesday at our place. And so uh, uh, Coach Brady uh, always has a few different approaches when, when he faces the Warriors. And so um, we're going to have a full house here, just like they're going to have t- uh, tomorrow for the boys' games. It's going to be a great environment, and, and they want to take it you know, by themselves. They want to get a league title. And, and they have to go through Madeira to get it. So, um, yeah, they are really excited. And then having that break as well, getting into the tournament, there's, there's a little di- different bend to the draws this year. And you look at different brackets that they go in. But um, with the pandemic and the OHSA's operation, mm-hmm. the, the regional games go to the top team on the bracket. And so not only are you looking at who do you want to stay away from, not in our case, but other teams are looking at who you want to stay away from or where do you want to go, in the bracket and where do you want to play for, for your neutral games in the district. Yeah. Now it's okay. What bracket do I have to take so I can get the top line in the regionals? And so when we get to the regionals, we're having home games. 
Um, it's going to be an equal crowd on both sides, but you're playing on your own field. So yeah. a little bit different bend to the tournament draw this year. Um, but it's interesting. They've figured it out. They're a lot smarter than I am. The coaches have figured it out. They're ready to go. Just really an exciting time of the year. Both soccer teams, the tennis team, football team, all of them together. And then to come down to the last week like this, a lot of fun. Well, yeah, no doubt. Uh, when your when you're two soccer teams are combined 26-0-3 on the year, I'm going to assume, like you said, that they're not looking to avoid anybody. A lot of teams are looking to avoid your two teams with the way they've gone this year. But you've got a chance to bring home four league championships this week with, with cross country and, and the two soccer teams. So a very, very, very big week ahead, uh, Tom. We certainly appreciate the time here. Uh, good luck to your teams and uh, looking forward to see how they do. Appreciate it. So thanks for having us again. We'll talk next Monday and, uh, and hopefully we'll have some hardware in the background. That uh, sounds good to us there. That is athletic director Tom Nurl at Marymount High School joining us for this week in Marymount Warriors Sports here in ESP Media powered by Sidearm Sports.